Hey, welcome back to the big boards. So, let me see here. What we got, what we're looking at is uh, here's the gap. And uh, I'm going to tell you about that piece right there in just a second. But before we do that, what we got here is the red hexes uh, crosses represent victory point locations that all have to be acquired in a scenario that I'm going to play tonight against Brad Smith. And uh, he has the uh, Hexides and Hand Grenades uh, blog. It's very cool. He's got uh, a great, clean, uh, articulate and well-presented blog, unlike mine. And I would encourage you to go and read his uh, stuff if you actually want to learn any games. And just come in to mind to watch the videos and laugh at uh, my mistakes. The game we're going to play has uh, several choppers that come in and drop forces off, and they're the MI-8 uh, variety Soviet uh, choppers. Now, if you're familiar with the lock and load system, you'll understand the tanks and the trucks and the, how the soldiers move and all that fun stuff. The choppers uh, really only, I think, first made their appearance, I think, in Forgotten Heroes 2, the Vietnam, the Vietnam um, module, which was the first one, but I don't think they were really in many others until this module and Ring of Hills. So they're different to use, is, is what I will say. Um, they're very powerful too. Uh, the hind, of course, with its cannons and machine guns is just brutal. There is one hind in this, and there is uh, there are several uh, MI8s that need to come in, drop off troops, and then leave by the end of turn two. It's a six-turn scenario, so that means really the U.S. has to uh, keep its head down as much as possible until reinforcements come on. They can come on somewhere, I think, up here and down to 20, 20 is, well, 20 is all the way down to the edge of the board. So uh, you bring this, you get an M1 and, uh, you know, M113s and some squads and stuff. So... I'm looking at this, I've played this a couple of times, I'm looking at this to think, what is Bragg going to do tonight? And where am I going to put my forces? He knows how I play. I kind of know how he plays. He is, uh, he has been practicing, I think. And we're not going to stand for getting just, you know, ass whipped because some guy's uh, been on the block practicing. Typically, the obvious places to land, if... The U.S. is going to keep its head down and not fire sag, uh, saggers, uh, laws or any uh, aircraft weaponry of any type in the first turn. Uh, it's great for the Soviets to get a landing spot here or here and drop three squads off. So this would probably take uh, you know a total of four choppers, so uh, three choppers. So it's basically two squads per chopper. So there'd be a third chopper here somewhere. Maybe you know land two here, two there. So take. Uh, six of his eight squads and two leaders. If you take this building and this building, that sets you up to assault this heavy two-story building here. Um, it also provides you with an opportunity to look at some overwatch opportunities, yeah? You can start banging on uh, the reinforcements as soon as they hit the board. I like to set up a... Uh, I like to set up a... Uh, the Saga team over there so that I can take long pot shots at the uh, US forces that come in. And the third thing that would make sense is since you have to capture these two buildings to win as well, you have to drop a squad or two off over here. How, however, if, I, if the Americans, and I'm not saying I'm gonna play the Americans because we don't know, we're gonna roll for it, I think. Uh, but if I'm the Americans, I would need to put something here, otherwise he can just drop off one squad and they can walk around and do their thing and be done with it. And that allows eight squads, or seven squads, to be down here, or it allows him to take a position up in here, which is a tough little building right here. And then he's got a great line of fire under my backside. So the defensive uh, situation for the Americans is very difficult, but it's achievable uh, because of some of the units we have some of the weapons we have, and some of the skill cards that we have. Plus the fact that we have reinforcements coming. So we've got to hold out. We don't want to have to recapture hexes, and we don't want to get into uh, exposing ourselves too much in the first two turns. So I'm going to guess that this is what Brad's going to do. He's going to drop off either here and here, 
or all in one location and make a big push, forcing me perhaps to reallocate my forces. Uh, the other alternative, of course, is that uh, he could land in one of these areas around here in the rear. That uh, protects him from being attacked on turn four and five from this direction, but it does expose him to a lot of open ground coming across here. Uh, that's not an ideal location for him to uh, tackle. Secondly, uh, taking this area is usually going to be pretty easy. There is uh, an interesting uh, option, I think, for the Americans. So we'll talk about the Americans in a second. That's what I think if uh, Brad plays the Soviets, that's what I think he will do. Uh, and I will uh, have to come up with a plan to uh, defeat that. And primarily, uh, well, I'm not going to say right now. I'm going to now finish this video, and then let's talk about uh, what some other alternatives are in the next section. In the next section.